I said, empty your mind. Be formless, shapeless, like water. It's about how hard you hit. It's about how hard you can get hit and keep moving forward. How much you can take and keep moving forward. Join movement expert Aaron Alexander as he dives into the minds of the foremost innovative healthcare thinkers and movement masters on their approach to optimal health and wellness. Online Podcast. Welcome back to Online Podcast. My name is Aaron Alexander. In today's tremendous episode, I got to have one of, if not the most revered neurologists on planet Earth, Dr. David Perlmutter. Um, he has his last four books have been on the New York Times bestselling list. Um, he's he's done everything. You guys already are familiar with this guy. He's he's tremendous and a super grounded human being, which I was um, honestly a bit so it's not that right, but I was surprised um, with his accolades and just uh, you know how many people are praising this guy for so long. I would imagine he'd be a little bit less grounded than he is and. He, from my perspective, who the hell cares about my perspective, but he's a rock solid guy and um, I really value this conversation. So I hope you guys get a lot out of it. I know that you will. Here's a little clip. Now we recognize that we are controlling the expression of our life code. And that's a, a, a very heady kind of topic. And with that comes profound responsibility. Thank you so much for tuning in to the website, if you feel drawn, aligntherapy.com, A-L-I-G-N therapy.com. On there, you will find the five-day movement challenge where you learn the fundamentals of how to integrate the most effective movement into everything that you do so that every moment can become an opportunity to make your body stand up straighter, taller, less pain, more flexible, strength, all those good adjectives. Um, also, you can get the show notes for this and the rest of the episodes. Uh, I have to run. I'm actually running behind to jump on an airplane to go to New York City for this book publishing thing. So, um, appreciate you guys' support on the on the on the grams on that. Um, so, no quotes or reviews or whatever. In general, if I do read uh, one of your guys' reviews on here, we will send you out a box of something from uh, Organifi. Thank you guys so much. Oh, last little thing is we have a, a voicemail option on the website, alignedtherapy.com. So if you guys leave a voicemail, if you have any questions, comments, ideas, anything, um, or just you just want to say hi, I might start, I might start uh, layering some of those comments from listeners onto the podcast. So hit the little voicemail tab on the right side of alignedtherapy.com, and we can make that thing happen. All right, thank you so much. I'm off. Bye. Ciao. Boo. Align podcast. Call me anything you want. <laughs> okay, perfect. Camel milk. Not Sally. I tried this. That's for you. Would you like some? I, my wife would love some too. This let's is get great your wife, stuff. Let's get your wife here. Where is the wife at? Uh, what on, is your wife's name again so I don't call her the wife? Lise. That's not appropriate at all. The wife. I can't call her the wife. <laughs> I don't know if you're hearing this in an audio. <laughs> the wife. I'm just going to do a 20 second thing here. Yeah. So, hi folks. Right now I'm drinking, believe it or not, camel milk. Milk from the camel. Uh, a really uh, advantageous drink, new to me, uh, but we're talking about pure A2 uh, in terms of the casomorphin uh, content. So um, really very interesting that we're seeing this in the marketplace now. Yeah. So we're ready to go. Okay. Are we, so with the, with the whew, dropping in. Yeah, exactly. No, so, he was just dropping in. That was a moment there. That was a moment. We just did a little drop in. So I don't do any kind of introductions thing. We're just hanging out. We've already started. My, it's, my it, has, it has begun. <laughs> I absolutely love digging into uh, your books. Was and your work. this um, arthroscopic? No, not yet. Hopefully never again. This was just a random bike accident from oh, years really? ago. Oh, really? I've gosh. been it's like shark and bear accidents, but I don't do that anymore. Shark and bear? I just come, I just come, come clean with the honest. I just skidded my bike across the wow. street. It wasn't that cool of a story at all. Oh, all right. Yeah. You got any good scar stories? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> That's when you start a podcast. Very, very scar many. stories. Oh, my gosh. I don't want to talk about it. Okay. Perfect. <laughs> um, so, I was really impressed with how grounded and real of a, of a guy you are. Often, well, thank you. Yeah, yeah, I really mean that. Oftentimes I'm meeting that. people that have, because you have multiple New York Times bestselling books and have all this clout around you, it's easy to kind of get lost in that. You know, I, I didn't know where we're going on this interview, but I, I would just say I am just really, uh, really pleased and content with where I am in life. Yeah. You know, all the, all the boxes have been checked and I'm just super satisfied with what we're accomplishing right now. We're accomplishing a lot. I think that the mission is to give out information as I see it. I've been blessed to have a, you know, incredibly wonderful marriage and 
It, you know, just it's all about gratitude. And that, so, and that gratitude means expression of gratitude is giving back what you can, in yeah. my opinion. And so that, I think, is some of the biggest, highest leverage components in, in having a healthy brain and healthy body that we don't really talk about so much because it's not as it's, measurable. It's really true. And frankly, there are, it is measurable to some degree. I mean, there's new research that uh, actually is able to demonstrate on what are called functional MRI scans, uh, changes that happen in the brain when individuals are given the opportunity to, be, uh, to demonstrate gratitude. There's, there's been trials that have been set up where individuals are allowed to share something versus not uh, sharing as a part of demonstrating their response to being given something, i.e. gratitude. Mm. And we can actually, to some degree, quantify that now. Yeah, so, reduces pain as well, I've read in other, other studies. Absolutely, and um, you know, my mission in moving forward, I mean, we, we did uh, low carb, low sugar, gluten, and all that. We talked about the microbiome. But in moving forward, it's about what can we do as humans to reconnect ourselves to the part of the brain that makes us compassionate, empathetic, uh, and able to experience and participate in gratitude as opposed to uh, the more primitive part of the brain that's involved in self-indulgence uh, and narcissism. And you know, we, dare I say, live in a society that really caters to our immediate needs for gratification and the, the sense of the me world. Yeah. And it's really not serving us as humans uh, the way that we can be served if we all participate in the, the shared uh, care for the planet, the shared care for our neighbors, and really for all those who are around us. You're familiar with the 80-year-old Harvard study? But so they, they started following people in 1938 during the, during the Great Depression, and uh, it, was, it was, I think, 238 students. I was just reading about it recently, so it's, mm -hmm. the numbers are fresh. And so they've been following people for the last 80 years to see, it's like, okay, is this a genetic thing or is this like a dietary thing? And what they found with that is it's a relationship thing. Yeah. So the few people that are left, it's like the people that had the best relationships, those are the people who are like, yeah, all the cortisol and t testosterone and all. It's like, oh, we're winning. Yeah, we're together. It, it's all about connection. Mm. And on multiple levels, we'll talk about that in just a moment, but you know, when, when you see studies like the Blue Zones that yeah. look at populations that have more resistance to disease, they have longevity, and everyone's looking to extract the secret ingredient. And it's much like trying to extract an active ingredient from a plant and then manufacture a drug based upon that active ingredient, right. as opposed to looking at the plant and all the components that converge and, and dance together to make the whole plant really the most salubrious uh, thing that you can entertain. And uh, similarly, as we look at, uh, when look at populations, everyone's saying, well, they have a high-fat diet or a low-fat diet or they eat this specific food or they take a certain vitamin. No, it's, it's multiple factors, again, that converge on lifestyle. And I think that the one that is most uh, neglected is the connectedness to other people. Yeah. That is perhaps the most important thing in life. And as we talked about a moment ago, it's all about reconnecting to your messages of your genome. That's what a paleo conference is about. The messages of your microbiome uh, and the messages that um, have been handed down from our ancestors, not necessarily genetically, but through tradition. So it's connecting to that. That's what has allowed us to survive. And in moving forward, you know, I think we all experience the fact that we're disconnected. Yeah. We are disconnected from the notion of giving the right signals to our DNA. Our DNA responds to our food choices, our sleep habits, our levels of stress. And when we distance ourselves from that appropriate connection, then suddenly we pave the way not for survivability, and disease resistance, we paved the way for illness, and that's what we're seeing around us. So it's time to reconnect. How do we reconnect in a world where we maybe don't receive adequate information, and, and it almost seems like the, the, the deck is against us to understand how to connect with ourselves in the first place? That's a home run, what you just said, and uh, the deck is clearly stacked against us. We don't realize that our decision-making processes are being bombarded every minute of every day by forces that do not have your self-interest in right. mind. Marketing, uh, the, the capturing of your Facebook data to target you with specific ads, television commercials with individuals who look as if they are giving you wisdom, 
but are designed. They're actors. They're not really people who have this or that disease or who have made a lot of money doing this or that or take a certain medication, whatever. They're actors, but they target the part of your brain that seeks to connect with those who have wisdom in order to modify your decisions. So sure. our decision-making process has been hijacked. <laughs> not for your good, but for the good of, of marketeers. Yeah. It's like hacking into your psychological weaknesses, essentially. Absolutely. If you there see a, a zingy bar or a notification tab. How did that happen? And the notion that um, even Alexa is listening to your conversations when you've not engaged Alexa in your home. Hmm. And suddenly, ads will appear in your feed uh, based upon what Alexa heard is a very scary proposition. Hmm. So what do people You're thinking do about that right now, aren't you? Yeah, I think about that stuff. That's that's, that's yeah. like, how do how do people start to take it back? Like, what's number one, and that's it's part of our mission moving forward is recognition that it's happening. Now, watch a commercial, but recognize that it doesn't have your interest at heart. This medication, whatever it is that's being talked about in the commercial, it, it's not designed for you. It's designed for the shareholders. Not the stakeholders, the shareholders. So uh, the, mo the first moment of recognition is uh, the allegory of the cave. Plato's allegory of the cave is when you finally turn from looking at the shadows and look into the light, you never go back. So just when you get that aha moment, then you begin to look at all of these influences upon your life that are placed there for, again, not for your benefit. It changes the, the playing field. Yeah. Neurogenesis not to change the topic, but that was something at some point we believed was impossible to happen. Correct. Is there anything else that you see in your experience as a doctor of forever? I don't know how long you've been, you've been doing this since you were a little guy. Your dad was, your dad was in the same I've been field, doing right? it. We don't have to talk about how many years, but yeah. I'm, I'm 63. It's been like, yeah, right. So, well, I, I, we can ask you what else. Is there anything else that like, okay, at one point it's like, no, just impossible. Is there anything yeah. else that you're like, I think there might be some other oh, yeah, things I think, flicking uh, around the, here. The two really, uh, important discoveries that have were were j just broke down some uh you know were iconoclastic to the nth degree one was neurogenesis we believe fully that the human brain could not regenerate could not grow new brain cells we were indoctrinated with that dogma in medical school finally in 1998 dr peter erickson demonstrated that in fact humans grow new brain cells and you know, for all of us who grew up at the time when we were told that every beer costs you 20,000 brain cells, remember that yeah, or whatever, yeah. uh, that was obviously good news. The other uh, important dogma that was overturned was that we don't have any control of our, our DNA. We were in, uh, schooled to mm. look upon DNA as an absolute one-way uh, dictum from DNA to protein to function. And that was, you know, could not be violated. Now we recognize that we are controlling the expression of our life code. And that's a, right. a, a very heady kind of topic. And with that comes profound responsibility. Yeah. Yeah, so taking that responsibility. So you're familiar with like Bruce Lipton and epigenetics and all that. Sure. So taking that responsibility, I think it's, it's easier for us, in a sense, to put the responsibility out. We've almost been trained to put the responsibility out. Offload. Yeah. And, you know, Bruce Lipton, of course, melded uh, this notion of uh, changing gene expression and also looks at neurogenesis and also synaptogenesis in his work on changing the brain. Yeah. Uh, but you're right. We've been kind of, uh, you know, trained almost, convinced in Western cultures that we should offload uh, our health yep. to some prescription. And you know, that's the, the coin of medical commerce is the prescription pad. I've got this, I've got that, and ultimately you walk out 15 minutes later with something written on a piece of paper, and that is what is the accepted course of events for you and your health. And it is uh, such an, an aberrant way of looking at healthcare because frankly, it doesn't in even involve healthcare. It's illness care. It's treating illness. Yep. It's not involved in keeping people healthy. And uh, we now recognize that the most appropriate approach is keeping healthy. The most economic approach is keeping healthy. And the most compassionate approach is keeping people healthy as well. Yeah. Yeah, that's some, so I've done maybe 200 or so recordings of this now, and so I've gotten to hear all these different voices. And that's the thing that I see a lot of is, is oftentimes we're, we're thinking topically and we 
put all this energy into this topical work and we don't get into that that deeper training part that's right you and know taking power of your own self and it's you know it comes this knowledge base comes with responsibility on the part of the individual when uh, you know people say well in my work for example that, that is really outside the box. You're really trying to be outside the box. Well, the reality is I'm not trying to be outside of the box. My mission in life is to make the box bigger. Yeah. So that these notions of health and, dis and disease resistance and longevity are considered in the box. That more and more people realize that our lifestyle choices, the foods we eat, the exercise we get, the, the limitation of stress in our lives, the quality of our sleep, et cetera, are, cr are critically important for health uh, that work through various pathways, not the least of which is by changing the expression of our DNA, like we talked about. Yeah. You probably got to run. What is the time? We got a time? Time check. Time check, 11.20. 11.20. Oh, okay. We still got a little bit. Um, hopefully, perhaps we can do this again in Florida. I am ready. Come fall time. That'd be a really good thing. Is there anything, so just at home, since I was, I just want to be sensitive to, to that, um, but is there anything, what's like easy, tangible take-homes, like fasting, sleep, grains? Like I think fasting is an, a, an important uh, concept to leverage for health. Uh, not for everyone, but I think people should develop uh, a level of acceptance in terms of what works for them. Uh, at the very least, I think if we protract breakfast to be something that happens at noon or one or two in the afternoon. Mm. Uh, it's something most people can do. I think with brittle diabetics, you have to be careful. Yeah. Uh, but you know, for a lot of people engaging in a two to three day fast, I think is a reasonable thing as well. But you realize that after you've had your evening meal, there's something that happens in the morning and it's called break fast. And that term means you've broken finally the fast that is nature's gift to you for the entire night when you're sleeping and then you know, the more of that you can engage, the more you are already shifting your body over to burning ketones naturally. What about having an occasional rave and occasionally staying up super late and occasionally having a blowout? I heard you mention on another podcast that actually having one night of disrupted sleep increases brain-derived neurotrophic factor. I'm glad you picked factor. up on that. Uh, that was, you know, a couple of studies showed that. And we're all about increasing BDNF and why it would be that being sleep-deprived for one night is going to amplify BDNF, I don't exactly know. But think about, you know, historically in our Paleolithic times, uh, if we were up all night, we were probably doing something important. Yeah. Very important because normally we would sleep when the sun went down. And having said that, uh, maybe it's because whatever that important thing we were trying to accomplish needed to be boosted and therefore the BDNF is increased. Yeah. I think that, that it's, it's us getting stuck inside of our own dogmas of, of what health is. Yeah. Sometimes that can become quite unhealthy. There's the, you know, the term orthorexia, whatever. Yeah, you know, true. But, but we can get trapped within that confine, and that, you know, that boundary eventually becomes a noose is something that I've said too many times in this podcast. I, I think that uh, people can become uh, overly involved with the minutia of it. Yeah. You know, my job, I think, is uh, though I, I, I really validate personalized medicine, in terms of laboratory analysis of the individual, what makes you different, what are your particular needs in moving forward. Yeah. I think that my more important mission are the broad strokes globally, meaning what are the few fundamentals that we can say are going to be helpful for virtually everyone. So I gave a talk to the World Bank on this topic a few months ago that was broadcast to 150 sites around the world, which I thought was great that we've got to cut our carbs, we've got to limit our uh, consumption of sugar, that artificial sweeteners are to be avoided, that exercise is critical, get quality sleep, yeah. and limit stress. Broad strokes. And it'd be hard to argue that, oh, there's a subpopulation of people who really need a lot more stress in their lives and shouldn't sleep at all. Right. Uh, you know, so, um, again, I value personalized medicine. I think that understanding someone's unique genetic predispositions, valuable information, do you carry... Uh, these SNPs, these single nucleotide polymorphisms in your genes that indicate that you need a specific form of B vitamins, for example. Uh, I think that's valuable information, for sure. One-on-one yeah. -on -one with a, a skilled healthcare provider who can work with you and tell you what you need. But most people, I think, who are engaged in, in my work uh, aren't doing that. And, and my outreach is trying to be as, as broad scope as possible. You know, when I wrote... Uh, this grain brain, it's, again, the broad strokes. And 
you know, I'm grateful that book's in 30 languages now, so we're reaching a lot of people around the world, telling them those five things, including uh, getting rid of the gluten. Limit your carbs, get some exercise, make sure you sleep well. These are fundamentals, and I think uh, moving forward, that's continuing. We're revising that book for the five-year cool. five anniversary. I cannot believe it. You, so when people, sometimes if they, their partner or significant other dies or they lose their job or retire, they'll kind of start to decline after that. So it seems like there's almost like this, the community, the tribe keeping you here. Like you feel like you're valued yes. in the world. Your voice is heard. All of a sudden, I think there's, there's a synaptic neurogenic. I think that's what kind of really keeps us going. Is there any kind of like what inspires you to keep on going? Uh, the unknown. Oh, good. Uh, yeah. And I've That's been good. criticized in the past because uh, I've changed my messaging. Uh, 25 years ago, I think I was writing about being on a low-fat diet hmm. as a good choice. That's what the state of our literature uh, of scientific research was telling us. Right. We knew that was uh, false and that we received that information for the wrong reasons, which, again, was marketing, which is a breathtaking story in and of itself. But having said that, um, there are still many unanswered questions that we have, and that's what's exciting. That's what moves us forward. The fact that our messaging is dynamic, that shouldn't be a source of criticism. Uh, that should be a, a source of, of value, yeah. that the messaging changes with time as we learn more and more. Yeah. And I think, interestingly, what I've observed in the past few years is that this whole paleo idea of trying to speak to our genome in the way that it has been spoken to for 200,000 years is really uh, impressive in terms of how, what the health outcomes look like when people really start to leverage their ability to control their genetic destiny. Cool. All right, let's wrap this thing up so you All can right. go do important things here at the Paleo FX. Um, where do people find you and find your books and learn more? I'm, like, uh, I'm so grateful that you're out there. Let's say uh, drperlmutter.com. That's hard. drperlmutter.com. You can do that. And newsletter goes out every week. It's free, of course. Uh, and the other thing about drperlmutter.com I think is really important is it is a very robust resource for all of the full PDFs of all the scientific literature that's in my books and that I talk about when I lecture. And people want to know, gee, I want that study. There you go. Just go there and go to the learn section and put in a keyword and now it'll come. You can print the PDF. Rad. Can we flip you upside down and do some macro? I'm ready. Let's acro. do it. We're going to do some macro. <laughs> oh, gosh. All right. Here we go. I have no idea what here I just we go. committed to. All right. Let's uh, throw. Here, maybe keep the things on. There might be some interesting th Actually, no. Take them out because it'll we go up in the, in the situation here. So we throw a pillow down. We're in a situation here. Hey why, why are you gonna copy my stuff? Oh, dude, I'm messing up your vibe. <laughs> All right. Oh, we can't do that there. Align Podcast. Thank you guys so much for tuning into that conversation. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. There's some ways that you can support this podcast, one of which you can pick up an Align Band, which is a heavy-duty resistance band. It comes along with a door anchor and a carrying case and a video guide on how to mobilize those joints and integrate that body of yours. Really great stuff. You can be found at AlignTherapy.com and also on Amazon.com. Um, thank you also so much for or utilizing the Amazon affiliate link on the right-hand sidebar of the podcast page. Bookmark that thing. Anytime you purchase some crap on Amazon, purchase that crap. Through that link, we get a percentage of it. costs you nothing. And I think that's enough. Thank you guys so much for reviews on iTunes. Thank you for listening. Thank you for supporting. Have a beautiful rest of your day. Bye.